blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Important profit with it. Obedience to God will give you testimony. Are you ready for God? I tell you, God is ready for you. God is ready to bless you. When you are not inspiring, you are inspiring people. When you stop growing, you start down. God is ready for you to be happy the earlier you know whom you are in God the better you will be to be let's put our hands together for redeem voices for one short song very very short
Lord and say hallelujah. Amen. Glorify the Lord and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship and give you thanks. We thank you that you guide our footsteps. We thank you that you promise us we'll never be alone anymore. Now may your word circumcise our hearts, that our ears might receive, that our lives may bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Give Jesus a clap offering before you sit down. Everybody sit down. Thank you. It's a new day. I say it's a new day. This month is a new month for you and your family. Whatever you lay your hand to do shall prosper. Don't start the day with weaklings. Start the day with strengthened people. Don't, 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 don't start the day with somebody who say, since last night I did not sleep, my neck is just, just go this corner. No. Look for somebody who say, thank God today is a brand new day. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? That is the language you need to start the day with. If I will just... Well, if you are the strong one, rebuke that infirmity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now cast out that demon of oppression and affliction and pray the prayer of faith. Do you hear what I'm saying now? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers in high places. What we are here for this morning is to learn by the grace of God how to communicate with the Holy Spirit. Demonic spirit communicate fast to people's mind. That's why sometimes you think positive, many times you think negative. And 90% of your life is governed by your thinking because it's your thought that gives you direction. But if you are not led by the flesh and you are led by the spirit, your thoughts are the thoughts of God. Romans chapter 8. Very, very wonderful lesson we learned from here this morning. Verse 4. Romans 8 verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. For if ye live after the flesh, ye die. But if ye through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are, we are, we are, I am, you are. All right. Now let's jump quickly to the down, 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 down. Lower side of the Bible. Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. For hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth why doeth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we, then do we with patience wait for it. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings we cannot be uttered. Verse 27. He that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, 
because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse 28. And we know that all things, we know that some things, we know that few things, we know that occasionally some things work together for good. Everything work together for good. Everything work. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. for good your farm your business your marriage your home work together for good for them that do what all right look at the verse we changed this morning we left here pastor Festus and i left here after eight we left we finally finished after eight the scripture that we centered on was look at the next verse for whom he did for no Hmm? Is that in your Bible? He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, 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 moreover. Is that in your Bible? Whom he predestinated them, he also called, and whom he called them, he also justified, whom he justified. Then he also glorified. Then he also glorified. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God is for me, who can be against me? All right. Now look at where we are coming from. We are told here that the fleshly people groan at. But even those of us that are spirit-filled also groan at. Is there. The pain that the unrighteous suffer many times, we suffer it because of infirmity and the affliction of the enemy. But we are told here that the affliction that is put on us by the enemy is not from the throne of God. Affliction is something the enemy throw on you to afflict you to cause you distraction in your area of pursuit. Then infirmity is that thing that you find in yourself, you don't know where it comes from. It suddenly, like you wake up one morning, your eye cannot open. That's infirmity. 
You wake up one morning, your stomach is twisting, about to kill you. That's infirmity. It's also affliction, but it's infirmity because one, where about, you didn't apply for, you don't know where it's coming from. But we are told, if we are in the Spirit, as God himself is in the Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, and that Spirit is alive today. I say that Spirit is alive today. That Spirit is alive today. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can quicken your mortal body. It is of great paramount importance that you live above flesh, above the natural dependence and dependability on your skill and flesh. You have to come to this stage in your life. You now pray all you know to pray, but after you have prayed all you know to pray, and knowing what to pray is not enough to do you good, there's a spirit kept in store. It is called the spirit of the living God. When that spirit comes upon your life, what you don't know how to pray, that spirit prays it for you with great acceptability from God. Because the Spirit of God touches the heart of God. The mind of God touch. The Spirit of God is in the mind of God. And when that Spirit descends on you, and come on you, and possess you, and occupy you, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Then, the prayer you didn't know to pray, when you open your mouth, the Spirit sees your fleshly tongue, and give you divine utterance. And that divine utterance soak away and take from you the fleshly fears and defeat. Through that ability, there's creation in your head. That's why when you see spirit-filled people, they are people of many parts. Because there's creativity in their head, there's creativity in their heart, there's knowing and understanding within their being. They are the same people that do not stay long time in the camp of affliction and infirmity. Because immediately that spirit come upon them as a torture. The spirit of God is the upper spirit and the higher spirit and the bigger spirit and a leading spirit and a healing spirit and a deliverance spirit. Come and sweep away that spirit. That is why every one of us must ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, if the Holy Spirit come to you and take your tongue, you don't, you don't pray anymore like this. Father, this thing has been paining me for five years now. I hope one day it's going to be healed. <laughs> no! The Spirit of God is the Spirit of anger against anguish. You look at your body, that's why the Bible says everyone should examine himself. He's not asking you to find out whether you drank two years ago. No, that's not what he meant by that. Examine yourself. When you want to take communion, see where you have pain. When you take communion, say, the blood of Jesus is going straight now. It's in divine injection to that part where I have my pain. Losomaha, Kurotake, Premaha, Mosondo, Yekelama, Yefose. I'm healed. You say that, you get up, you look at your flesh. It has bowed to the understanding of the Spirit of God. You don't spend 10 years looking for people to come and visit you. Because one of the greatest problems ordained ministers of all kinds, of every ministry have, is that I've been in that church now for 27 years. The only time I have problem, they didn't come to visit me. They have the spirit of complaint, not the spirit of compliance. And the spirit of complaint will touch anybody at any time. Everybody in the church is, is your enemy who is well because you are sick. It looks as if the saints gave you the disease which came from the enemy. But unless you know that your God is not afflicted for the healer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we want to this morning, by the grace of God, spend the first 10 minutes to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? That's what we spend time. We spend nearly 40 minutes this morning. 
We spent nearly 40 minutes here. I made sure that everyone that came here this morning was compelled to at least believe there's need for the Holy Spirit. Because that he says, when we know not what to pray, the Spirit itself helps our infirmity. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying now? Not only that the Spirit helps your infirmity, but listen to this. The Spirit also prays for you. A direct prayer that gets to the ear of God. Because God is not an house man, it's not an evil man, it's not a jackery man. There's only one language in heaven, and that is the language of the Holy Spirit. And when that Holy Spirit come, in you, come on you, then you can now ask yourself question, which was what I spent time to teach this morning. He said, now, now that I know God is for me, who can be against me? Then he said, what can we say to all these things? Wahala of food, need of bed rest, rent money, I don't have. What can I say to this thing now that I know God is for me? Try it like that. What can I say to all these things? Now that I know God is for me. Try it louder. That's what we did this morning. Okay, now, if you know that God is for you, and you are not able to pay your rent, the Bible says God is the one that supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory. By who? Christ Jesus. All right, you understand that one. Now, Jesus, when he rose up, he said, Touch me while I'm still here. For spirit have no bones and flesh. Touch me, I have. But when I descend, when I descended, I still retain that. But when I now ascend, I shall go back to where I come from. When I get there, whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, because I've tested, I've known how flesh is like now. When you have broken hands, Jesus has had wounded body. He has had bruised eyes. He has had mad face. They slapped him that you couldn't recognize him anymore. That's what Isaiah 53 said. They so beat him that if you look at him, you wouldn't believe it was Jesus. But thank God, in resurrection, the whole thing were left in the grave. The curtain of the dead body did not rise up with him. When he came up, he came glorified. He died in weakness, he rose in strength. Somebody tap your right leg now. Hallelujah. We are done with it. So, you need to know. He said, what do we say? You look at everything around you. They are gloomy and barbarous. The Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Amorites, they are all armoring you and clamoring on you. Now, the Bible is asking you, what do you say now that you know God is for you? I pray that my language will come to your head. Now that you know God is for you, what do you now say to this thing? That is the actual interpretation in Greek and Hebrew. Now that you know God is for you, and sickness is not God's own, what do you now say to these things? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Now that you know that hunger is not the gift of God, and you know God is for you, now that you know God is for you, fear is not from God. Sickness is not from God. Abandonment is not from God. Is anybody there? Start to unwind your engine. Start to unwind your engine. Start to unwind your engine. Start to prepare it. Start to get it ready. Start to get it ready. Because the reason many of you will never be rich is that you are working so hard in the flesh. And laboring with nothing in the spirit. And the arm of flesh will fail you. It fails. No matter how you try. No matter how you try. You say, I don't know what happened to my money. Now this is not the question you have to ask. You have to ask yourself, what do I now say to all these things? Now that I know God is for me. My own is to say, I told them this morning, I said, as a, as a daily congested busy person. Particularly, I don't know the day God will deliver me from a project. It is my prayer that between now and ten years, I'll be delivered from projects of the heavy magnitude we're involving. You are not, unless you're in the spirit, they can carry you from the church to faith medical center. So what I say to myself is, I will build my church. God, I'm lucky to be a co-laborer with you. It's not my project, it's your project. Then what do I do? I jump from the flesh of afflicting myself. 
Because if I'm not willing to do what God said, God can look for any other person to do it. That's what I remind myself of. Number two, God didn't call me to destroy me. He called me to bless me. Therefore, if I'm going to go by blessing, I cannot misinterpret grace for groaning. We are told to let this mind be in us, which was in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ will never tell you to go and sleep the gutter. The mind of Christ will never tell you to cry to your enemy's camp for help. The mind of Christ tells you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The mind of Christ tells you, it's rough today, it's going to be neat tomorrow. The mind of Christ tells you, I may be beaten down and worn out now, but I'm a winner no matter what stage I find myself. When the heat is over, I'm going to sing a new song. When the battle is over, I'm going to be more than conqueror. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Okay, if you can be patient with me for a few minutes, listen to what I glanced through this morning inside my memory when I got home between 9 o'clock and 10. It says in Romans chapter 4, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Which means even faith has righteousness. And righteousness has faith. Do you hear what I'm saying? So many, 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 many. I began to tell myself early this morning, before five o'clock, many of the prophetic utterances God has given me, not one has ever failed. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. spoke to me about the falling of the Berlin Wall. I brought the tape from England home seven years ago. When the Lord spoke to me about the crumbling of the Gulf War, I brought the tape home. Anything God tells me, I make sure that I communicate it 
to people because a day will come you will not be here again in the physical but what you said people can remember you said so the good that happened in your time should not be forgotten is anybody hear what i'm saying the communication line between you still in the flesh and god in the spirit can only be achieved by the spirit of god that can come upon you did you hear what i'm saying sometimes you find yourself in a scale of losses down in business down in home down in marriage down in health and so many times it is from one downcast to another downcast from one failure the the affliction of the enemy is only multiplied only the grace of god brings subtraction to the works of the enemy do you hear what i'm saying now the promise of what god gave to abraham to be the heir of the world was not to him alone but it was to all who will come through faith to righteousness that means any good thing god did for You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. 
He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was the Dowser's level of faith beyond man's uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society. A man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we or we boys would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a track load of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship 
for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ida Hosea University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the sea. We have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, Give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches 
in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others feared to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to declare and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. 
He was very, very young. But it didn't matter. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And, and one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. And he said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. See, this time it was about four o'clock, and I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you, don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, I, I, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead and I said listen don't make a mockery of yourself the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal that sick raise the dead I said what I beg what did I talk Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. He <laughs> said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I rise. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What's the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside the world room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, about three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. 
So they tried the in a ordinary native doctor tried they can raise her back to life. He said, Where is her now? He said, She's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today and he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another day back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came, 
I said, where is the child? You say the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside. And I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. 
You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take 
the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon frada lisa president of christ for the nation incorporated dallas texas usa i know of no young black in all africa who is preaching who is reaching million as benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got 
miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people. Said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa Evangelistic Ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to world leaders, leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. Idaosa also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Idaosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about is early ministry again as a youth he got converted to christianity by a certain pastor Paul, and joined in the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converting many to christianity after experiencing a revelation from god calling him into ministry he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa 
was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.